r slash dating over 30. JL1585 says. Traveled for a first date, whose ball is it? I 37 male, met a woman 35 female, on a dating app. We've been chatting back and forth about 2 to 3 weeks. The conversation has been slightly above average, mostly because she's a slight bit socially awkward, that is. Hard to read her, because of a mix of culture and social cues and cadences. Last week we decided to schedule a date for this past weekend, the issue is she lives a few hours away. I asked her if she wanted to meet halfway, or if she wanted me to drive out to her. We decided I should drive to her, and so I did. The date was slightly better than okay. Not great, but definitely not bad. We are both interested in marriage, so the whole spark thing isn't necessary from a cultural perspective for me, can't speak on her behalf. After dinner, where I paid, she invited me up to her place for about an hour. We had a drink, a friendly convo, and it was 10.30pm, so time to get back on the road. I got a hug, not a kiss, and then I drove home which I was slightly nervous about because the drive was a few hours, and I was worried it'd fall asleep. I was falling asleep a lot on the way home, like a ton of times. I fought to stay awake. Luckily nothing happened, I was probably asleep 30 seconds upon arriving home, because I was so sleepy. When I woke up, no text from her to see if I had gotten home. In fact, it's been 36 hours, and still nothing. This surprised me. I'm a little confused on how to go from here. Not hearing from her from an optimistic perspective, seems like mixed signals, that is. Maybe she's expecting me to reach out. The down case is she's just not interested. I know typically the guy is supposed to follow up, but I feel like I put so much effort. Drove hours, paid for dinner, etc. I don't want her to be polite, and I continue spending effort, and she's not sure she's interested and this gets drawn out. Should I wait for her to reach out? Or should I be reaching out? Too long didn't read, traveled for a first date, and when I got back, she never checked in with me to ask if I got home safe. Normally I'd follow up, but this seems weird, and I don't want to keep investing in a scenario where someone's not sure if they're interested with the investments of time and money. Should I be reaching out? Or should I wait for her to reach? Janostan Fangle says. You're the guy, your job is to reach out after the date. Sweet underscore yam underscore 5645 says. She might have been asleep by the time you got home. She may have been unsure what time you got back and maybe didn't want to wake you in case you'd arrived and were asleep. It could have slipped her mind. A lot of women hope the man will make first contact after the date, so we don't come off clingy or needy. Maybe she's waiting on you, and thought you were disinterested. You all both probably should communicate better. Fade 4 card says. She may not realize, or at least not be fairly applying the amount of effort you put into this date in a way that would lead to her making different decisions than her baseline normally would be. I think you're getting a bit too much in your head about things, and needing it all to happen in some perfect symbiotic way for how it should go in your view. Loosen up a bit. Don't take it so seriously that you immediately see her for your future wife. You're only going to get in your way by doing that. Fresh Tips says. If you don't believe in the spark, why mention that there wasn't one? I've literally felt the spark on numerous occasions with numerous people, so I can report back here that spark does indeed exist. Chemistry is, in fact, real. Season off mobbing boxes says. I'll echo other posters, and say she may be in the same spot today wondering if you're going to text if you had a good time or should she. In these situations, just send the text. John underscore week underscore the underscore third says. Does your gut give you the vibes that she cares? Throw it away already 89 says. She ain't worth it. Falling asleep at the wheel? Seriously bro? Get you a woman that wants to drive out to you. 
You'll never want it any other way. R slash dating over 30. Unlucky leadership 23 says. Do you observe how dates talk about their exes? I'm seeing someone, early stages, and he mentioned his ex a few times in a very contemptuous way, calling her names, clearly thinking of her as less than him. For instance, saying they couldn't get into a very famous club, because he was cool enough for it, but she was too stupid. I don't know why but this really rubbed me the wrong way, is it a red flag? For context, he is best friend with his EXS sister and a lot of her friends, yet they don't have any sort of civil relationship whatsoever. They also split years ago, I find it weird, that after so much time, and with so many friends in common he could still be so hateful. I don't know the details of the breakup, except that no cheating was involved, and he initiated it. This got me thinking, that how people talk about their exes is quite important to me. I have had a very bad breakup in my past, but after one year of no contact we reconciled, and despite some really bad behaviors from him, I would never talk shit about his character. It just feels immature. What do you think? Intellectual Nod85 says. I had a rex that dragged her ex. It can be bad oh man. Littlewing1307 says. Yes that would be a red flag deal breaker for me. Field Soft Jade says. Huge red flag. Butterflino5044 says. Went out with someone who said all of his exes are crazy, most women are crazy should have ran. Rusev Dato Day says. For me, that's a big red flag. The only time I'll talk negatively about exes, is if I'm explaining hang ups slash trauma to my current partner as part of a serious conversation, stuff that is relevant to the person I'm with, and even that is only when it gets to the point of a full relationship. It's purpose being to inform the current relationship, not vent about the past. Otherwise, exes need to stay a broadly neutral topic. If someone is too positive or too negative about them, it sets off quite a few red flags, to do with what they are still, hung up about past relationships. Chocolate Buff says. It annoys me when people, not necessarily dating, have a lot to talk about their ex, especially when it wasn't anything about ex. So Shiannonor underscore 28 says. Absolutely. Major red flag for me, because I'm at the point, that I don't care about your ex, unless you have a kid together. So why are we talking about them? Worse if there's a negative undertone to it. Either unresolved issues or accountability issues. You Yugajirami says. Yeah, that would irk me. It's one thing to describe a rough breakup slash relationship, but it's another to just speak ill of them out of the blue. Numbayona Noob says. This is common. Trust me, when you go through this, don't be surprised if you do the same. It's okay. We all do it. Eventually if you're mature enough, you'll heal it where you no longer have hate and contempt for them. Are you sure you would talk nice about a boyfriend who cheated on you and lied for 6 months? Doubt it. It's now time for an unpaid shoutout. Looking for a true gamer's paradise? Check out GamerAimer's channel, with over 300 plus video game systems, 7000 plus physical games, and more. She's got an impressive collection, to share follow her collecting journey, to see her real time pickups, and learn some insider tips on scoring great deals, whether you're a fellow collector or just. Love gaming history, you won't want to miss out on this nostalgic adventure link in the description. r slash dating over 30. Zev3k says. Being strung along or overthinking? I 33 female, have been seeing a guy 34 male, for almost 3 months. We are both parents, he has a few kids, I have one, and we both work a lot. We see each other once to twice a week at the moment, because of our busy schedules, and not being ready to meet each other's kid or kids. We are both not big on texting a lot throughout the day, but we usually have a conversation going, and will send one fairly long text a day. 
We go out on hikes, dinner slash breakfast dates, and have been camping. He always pays for everything, and recently just got me a toothbrush for his place, so I don't need to bring mine back and forth. We have great sexual chemistry, and are compatible in many ways. We both have not been in a serious relationship in a few years, but is what we are both looking for. He also mentioned his disgust in hookup culture. He got out of a 10 year marriage 3 years ago where his ex-wife really hurt him. I have worked very hard these last several years, to gain a more secure attachment style, and have felt pretty confident in my progress. I was more... Anxious attachment. A couple weeks ago I just had this feeling, that he was losing interest. It's hard for me to know, if I'm overthinking due to a tendency, to fall into an anxious attachment style, so I question myself as I don't want to end something that may be good, but I also want to protect myself. I also started a new birth control, and it has definitely made me a bit more anxious, and I plan on switching. Specifically, I felt as though he was avoiding more emotional topics, has been taking a half day longer to text back compared to before, not asking as many questions slash stopped complimenting, and I usually am the one to plan days. I have family in town for a bit, so we are only seeing each other once a week until they leave, and I wanted to put myself slash boundaries out there, and to give him a chance to back out, if he wasn't feeling it. I didn't want to just sit on my feelings for a week, before we saw each other again. So, I texted him expressing how I felt connected to him, and that I didn't want to see other people slash took down my dating profile and would prefer the same, and asked how he felt, and if he was on the same page, and that we could talk more in person if he'd prefer. He wrote back saying that we could have a more in-depth conversation in person, but that he was comfortable talking about where he was at, that he wasn't pursuing anyone else, and had no intention of having more than one sexual partner, and that when we see each other again we could talk about how we want this to look slash be. A few days before I opened up this conversation a friend of mine noticed he was still on his Tinder. But also that she thinks he deleted it the same day I had texted him about how I felt. This definitely eased me up a bit as it sounded, like he was probably on the same page and likely deleted his profile, after I expressed myself. I had also asked, if he'd like to attend an event with me at the end of July, and they had two dates for the show and I wanted to get tickets soon, before they sold out. He said that it sounded fun, and needed to look at his calendar. This last weekend he was at his first festival, so we didn't talk during those couple days, which is fine, and I knew he'd be out for a few days. We were supposed to get together today. He wrote me yesterday, when he was back home, and said that he might need to cancel, because he thinks he ate something bad, and got really sick, but that he'd keep me updated if that changes, but he also didn't try to set up a different date. However, he did give me a set date for the upcoming show in July. In many ways it seems like things are good, and he's on the same page, but I'm having a hard time shaking my worry that he may be stringing me along and him cancelling definitely re-sparked that fear. I get that things happen, and if I was super sick, I'd cancel too. People say to follow your gut, but since I tend to get anxious at times, plus the new birth control, I'm not sure how much I can trust my own gut, which is currently, mostly, unsure either way. I guess I'm asking for people's outside perspective. Does this seem like something I should continue? Strippy Things says. Op, all of your 4 dating posts you've made on reddit are about feelings of insecurity over what you feel, is not enough communication slash being validated enough. I think to have success in relationships it's going to be really important, that you communicate your needs up front to potential partners, and get real specific. It's not I need good communication, it's, I need you to text me x times per day and I need it to be consistent. If you need to cancel on me for some reason, that's okay but I need you to follow up with plans of rescheduling right away, even if you aren't feeling well at the moment. I really value plans being made into the future that express long term interest. Sexual exclusivity is important to me, and I want to hear you say explicitly that you have deleted dating apps etc. 
Right now it reads like anxious self-sabotaging stuff and it sounds like there is more work to do with both your communication and finding mechanisms where you can self-soothe. Latotis says. I texted him expressing how I felt connected to him and that I didn't want to see other people, that he wasn't pursuing anyone else, and had no intention of having more than one sexual partner I don't mean to sound all doom and gloom, but I don't think it bodes especially well, if you're talking about connection and he's off the cuff framing this as primarily about sexual exclusivity at 3 months. I'd really evaluate his vibe, when you guys speak, if you're looking for something more relations he poi. Grubnable says. I have the same kind of tendencies and it's really difficult to see the way forward when the anxiety has you in its grip. Since you haven't been able to sit down and really talk with him yet, and he wants to have that talk, I think the best tactic is to assume the best. It doesn't make a difference one way or the other what you choose to assume so why not choose the best outcome, so you can stop ruminating? It will also keep you more curious which I find helps immensely with my anxious attachment. It's a tough place to be, and I don't envy you. It's temporary though, you're doing your best. JT Balboa says. He wasn't pursuing anyone else, and had no intention of having more than one sexual partner, and that when we see each other again we could talk about how we want this to look slash be. He did give me a set date for the upcoming show in July. To me, he's sick and wants to be his best for you, considering how limited your time together has been. I've quoted what I think are pretty positive signs he's into you. I think you may be overthinking. It's not like he's ghosting you. You're gonna have more conversations. Good luck and good on you for being self-aware of things that could be self-sabotaging behavior. Sailor underscore marzipan says. A very real possibility here is that you do not do relationships the same way as each other. Once I'm dating someone seriously enough to be exclusive, I'm not paying attention as much attention to whether they make a new plan with me if they cancel an old one. Especially if the person is feeling sick, wouldn't they want to feel better before setting a new day? I also text less once I'm out of the initial dating phase, I think that's kinda normal. It's okay to realize someone's style doesn't work for you. It might just be that. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.